Look and upgrade your artillery, SWX-1. Coming up, check out the MKS S-Gen L 32-bit board. <laughs> Hey everybody, Chris Sergeant Taz here, and today I'm going to go over upgrading your artillery Sidewinder X1 with the MKS S Gen L motherboard that's 32 bit. I got the 2209 stepper drivers, and I'm going to install that with kind of backwards going with the LCD versus the TFT. So I actually got a, an old Ender 3. To put on there and make some of my functions work for me that I need um, the big thing I'm trying to do is get my commands back my m600 type commands like your pause at height your filament swap you know trying to get that to work properly uh, with the TFT all those signals tend to get blocked and don't seem to work you can use octoprint to pause at height but here's the problem with that. If you pause at height with Octoprint, your nozzle's still going to be hanging over your part. So even though you can pull the filament out, you're going to put new filament in and not be able to purge the excess. So you might get droplets onto your print. You might get the same color that it was already printing beforehand. You're going to get a mix. It's not going to turn out right if it's at the wrong layer where it's going to screw things up and you're going to wind up having a print that fails. So my whole effort in changing out, mainly as a change out the screen, but I figured why not upgrade the board? And I was going to try um, the MKS S Gen L, hoping that I could still keep my LED functions. Um, unfortunately, that didn't pan out. It's, still, it's not the same pinout as the regular Gen L board. So, that f feature didn't work for me, once again. Um, I'm still working out a workaround for it. I know I can put it on different pins. I'm just not sure which pins I want to put them on. I'm a little leery because I see like a 5-volt pin in there. And I'm afraid to put any power to those LEDs and, and wind up either messing the rib ribbon... Eh. Either messing the ribbon cable up or causing a problem with the board with back feed on that 5 volt pin. I'm not really 100% on how to, do, how to make the LEDs work. So I, I seen a couple other things where you could make it like standard because these are, are it's a NeoPixel LED but it's not set up like a NeoPixel would be normally. So you don't have the same lines running as you would for a normal NeoPixel. However they do it through the ribbon it goes like where you can put a BL touch. So there's a 5 volt pin in there and it, it's just confusing. So that's where I'm stuck with that on the LEDs. Other than that, the installation went fairly smooth aside from, as you'll see in the clip coming up. So coming up in the clip, I'm going to show you how I took everything apart to some degree and what I did with the board. So you're going to see that I matched up the boards and kind of did one for pin for pin. Unfortunately, you'll see in the clip in a second what kind of issues I had. So, as you can see, when I started taking things apart and doing the video, I had problems. It's hard to tell what I'm doing in the video, but what had happened is I was trying to get the, the steppers off, the stepper wires off the board, and they're all hot glued in. And they are hot glued in so well that it actually tore off the connector with 
the piece that I was trying to remove. So I took the took the actual connector and the board connector with it. And then I couldn't get them to separate. So I literally had to like break all of the plastic off and then clean up all the excess glue that was in there like a rock. It didn't mess the old board up, but not going to have the little fun little colored connector around it anymore because those are in the garbage. But other than that, it was a pretty easy swap. I did have at my disposal, which I'll put up here somewhere. Anyways, the schematic, which made it easier for me to see what I was doing so I could match up where the pins needed to go. Like I said, unfortunately, it didn't have the same pinouts that the LED does. On, on this board for whatever reason. Um, the older MKS Gen L board has pinouts where you could put the LEDs. The new one, not so much. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. I'm just not confident enough yet to figure out which pins I want to use. I have an idea about using auxiliary number two. That's if I don't have that closed off with my upgrade to the TFT24 when it arrives. So for now, I'm using the Ender 3 Pro old screen that I have, LCD, and I inverted the pin. I cut, cut the little clip off. And I've seen some people showing people how to do it. I'm going to tell you a good way of doing it really quick. And this is going to be a standby for a minute. Let me do this. Now that I've found my tools, and I probably edited out what I just said, so don't mind me. But... I found a really easy way of getting rid of that little guy there. You need to invert that so you need to get rid of that little key that goes into the slot so you can switch it around. And I've watched a million people almost cut their fingers off doing this because they're going to take one of these bad boys and do this stuff. Now you slip, you're going to wind up with some injuries, trust me. I've done quite a few over the years, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's healed up pretty good, but over the years I've sliced my wrist. I've done a few things by accident with these. This is not the way to get rid of that little nub. The easy way to do it is to take these guys here. And I'm not going to cut it for you because this is actually a new one and I don't want to break it, but I don't know if I'm going to use it for something else. But you take it. Get it between your nubs and just squeeze and you're done. Don't mess around with blades cutting out back towards yourself, cutting away from yourself and inadvertently cutting yourself to get that little keyway off when these guys will take care of it for you. So that's a top tip right there. Trust me, I know because I've done it the stupid way before. Don't do it that way. It's not a good idea. These guys will save you a ton of aggravation and a ton of time. So. I inverted this and then I also programmed Marlin to be um, what I used what would I, I use the um, CR10 for the display which enables that to work properly with one cable thankfully for now but eventually I get back to trying to figure out the the LEDs and when I do I'll probably post another video to show people which pins you can use on these boards so you don't wind up frying something you don't want to because unfortunately the neopixels don't work the way they have it set up through the ribbon cable for some reason it goes back to like an analog setting so there's three wires and a ground and i don't think you're supposed to put power to any of those three wires i think there just would be pins and it's kind of hard on the board to figure out a good location for it because the bl touch location or the servo location actually has a five volt pin in there and a ground and then you have one pin out so you obviously can't put all three of those there and you could maybe put the ground in but you don't want to put it on a 5 volt line so you're going to have one pin that actually goes into the servo so I, that's not an option um, I'm thinking of the auxiliary or another pin on the board that I can find where there's like three in a row I can borrow and reassign them in Marlin that should work hopefully we'll see but I'm guessing here because I'm not a good coder I'll be honest if I didn't have help from my friend Paul from Silvatech going over some of the Marlin with me, I'd probably have been lost because I get a little complicated 
with trying to go through it. It doesn't wrap around my brain sometimes. Not that hard. And there's a few out there already that people have done it for you already. You can just upload it and then put it on the SD card, stick it in, and just power on your system, and you could hopefully be done. But if you have anything different, you have to make sure you go through and figure out what's different in those codes to what you have sitting at on your, in front of you. If you don't have the right stuff, you're going to get all kinds of weird errors. So keep that in mind. The new interface for Marlin 2.0 and above is actually nice. So I use, uh, what is it, the Microsoft Virtual Studio Code with Platform I.O. And it actually is a lot simpler now than it was using the Adreno trying to figure out all of this stuff. Um, hopefully I'll get a video out on doing some of the basics on it when I get a chance. I'm just not 100% on it, and I don't want to guide somebody the wrong way. There's a ton of extra videos out here on YouTube. Teaching Tech does some stuff. Um, I know Chris's Basement does some stuff. A lot of good information there, and those guys know a little bit more than I do in the way of coding. So I would refer to, to the experts on that one. There's also a GitHub page that you can check out. kind of explains some of the stuff you need to do. And it does explain itself in Marlin to some degree. Thing to remember when you're doing the Marlin code, do not forget to put a couple forward slashes in and initial what you changed. So if something goes wrong when you upload it and you can't figure out what it is and you're not sure and you need to run through, you can actually type in your initials or what, however you want to classify it and you can find all the lines that you messed up or didn't mess up and figure out where you went wrong and go back. This is a simple way of doing your code. So it keeps it clean and neat. It doesn't affect the code at all. It's just an added extra line so you know what you changed and if you have to, you can change it back. Always a good top tip. Um, overall, it was a really simple install except for trying to get the pins out from the existing board. Um, the connectors were, were, were a struggle. I have to cut out, well I had to cut out, because you probably watched it a minute ago, but I cut out where I was swearing and cussing, because I was struggling with it, I mean it was really on there. But other than that, it wasn't that bad of an install once you got past the point of trying to get past, you know, disconnecting it unfortunately. Um, my first, in my other video, if you saw the, the uh, SKR, that was one that was really simple. But if I remember correctly, I did swap that board because I had a problem when I first got it. So I got a brand new board for that one. So I think I already did the swap and the glue wasn't that, I don't know, that tough. I, I don't know how it's explained it. It was really hard to pull that stuff off. So keep that in mind. It was a struggle to get it and, you know, that took me a half an hour trying to figure out why I couldn't get glue off of a connector. So, but like I said, I mapped it out, Matic out in front of me so I could verify where I was going with my connections, which made that easier. Um, it's always good to have a reference around you when you're doing this because sometimes they're a little bit different. Um, other than that, I already had pre-printed out the bracket for that little fan that I have that cool, does the stepper coolers, which I think is a better option. Um, you, you guys with the newer versions are gonna have the main case fan that's in the center versus us older guys that have the side fan, which is just stupid loud. It's like a wind tunnel the way it sits. It makes whistling noises and everything. It's the loudest thing on the printer. So this actually solves that problem for me, which is good and it vents out the same side as the vents are on the side. I just put a fan grill over the other side and left it open because that way at least you get some kind of passive cooling for the rest of the equipment. That's the way I looked at it. So you can go with that option. That link will be below. So if you want to print out the stepper, it, it works for the MKS and the SKR as well. It's the same setup because it's the same screw pattern and it works really well. I. I I recommend it because you're, I mean, you're using a regular 40 millimeter fan. You're getting enough airflow going through. Works great. And it's actually quieter. If you try and go with one of those um, blower fans, I think you're going to get vibration. 
I did put some rubberized pad in between the case and that plastic because when I first did it I don't know if because the, I mean I, didn't, I don't know if I didn't make it thick enough or it's just the way it's designed it had a little bit of vibration in it and it was hitting the top of the case that was making some noise but I just took a little rubberized pad and stuck it up in there up under the big fan and that was the end of that nice and quiet so there's another one for you to keep your steppers cool and that's the most important part of your board right there that's the way I would go up to you um, it for what it costs to print it I mean what is it like maybe 10 15 cents tops and your time so it, it, to me it was worth the investment it made a heck of a lot of noise reduction for me and it just worked out better so there's that um, thanks to all my new subscribers I appreciate you guys signing on um, if you're new to this channel give me a like and a subscribe I greatly appreciate it um, I will try and get more out to you I have a couple videos I'm gonna do on two color with Cura because that's what I like to use I like to use Cura I think I covered what I was gonna cover on this we'll find out because I'm gonna be editing this for a while but I, like I said I appreciate you guys give me a like and a subscribe um, I will be having a few more videos coming out as soon as I can and thanks for watching